Now that we've seen how some statistics are called from within specific geomes, let's take a look at the variety of statistics that we will call directly. In the first set of examples, we'll consider the following plot. Here, sepal length is described by the three species of the iris data set. Previously, we asked how many observations we had in each species, but here we are dealing with the distribution of a continuous variable. What can we do with this data? A typical way to summarize this data would be to take the mean and the standard deviation, or the 95% confidence interval. To calculate these values, we can use base package functions and make a new data frame. But a more convenient way is to call some functions in the HMIS package directly in ggplot. Let's see how the output looks with some random numbers. The function for returning the mean plus minus one standard deviation is smean.sdl. The hmisc function returns a named vector with the mean, lower, and upper bound. By default, it returns two standard deviations as a lower and upper bound, so we have to set the mult argument to one. To use this information in ggplot, there is a special function which simply converts this vector to a data frame and renames the variables to match the aesthetic naming convention of ggplot. The ggplot function is called mean underscore sdl. To use this, we'll call it as the fun.data argument within the stat summary function, which will automatically feed the results and a geome to our plot. By default, the stat summary function uses geome point range, which requires y, y min, and y max, exactly what is returned by mean underscore SDL, so everything works very well together. If we wanted a more typical error bar style plot, we can independently plot the mean and use the point argument for the geome, and again call mean underscore SDL, but this time use the error bar geome. Here, we can also set the width of the error bars. This gives us a typical plot in a scientific publication. But notice that we could have also made a typical bar plot with error bars by simply calling the bar geome. This is not recommended. We'll learn why when we get to the database of best practices chapter later on. The 95% CI is also straightforward. The HMIS function, smean.cl.normal, returns the mean and the upper and lower bounds of the 95% CI, which is calculated using the t-distribution, and can likewise be called from within the ggplot2 using mean cl normal. It should be obvious that we can use whatever function we want in stat summary, as long as the output matches the format expected by the geome that is called. Two other useful stat layer functions are stat function and stat qq. These are particularly useful if we want to ask about the distribution of our data. This is a very common question in statistics since many statistical tests make assumptions about the distribution of the data or we would just like to describe the distribution visually. Statisticians typically use visual cues to get an idea of the distribution of their data instead of relying on only numbers. In the first case, we can specify any function and produce the result in line plot. To see this in action, let's return to the first example we used in the first course, the mammalian body and brain weight stored in the mammal's data frame. We mentioned that our linear model fitted the log 10 transform data reasonably well. What we mean is that the log transform data seems to be normally distributed, so let's take a look at that in detail. Here we simply call a normal distribution and plot it passing along arguments using a list so that it is centered on our distribution thus allowing us to compare how well our data is normally distributed. As you can see, the log 10 mammalian body weight is described by a log normal curve pretty well. Notice that we have another geome here, geome rug, which adds those little black tick marks on the bottom of the plot. This is a handy way of seeing the actual values in combination with the summary distribution. Here, we're showing a frequency histogram, which we saw in the first course. A density plot would be a more typical way of making this comparison, but we'll get into the details of that in the next course. Another typical way to determine how well our sample matches the normal distribution is to use a QQ plot. In this case, we plot our sample against a the theoretical distribution and draw a line intersecting the scatter plot at the first and third quartiles, the so-called QQ line. Unfortunately, there is no function for drawing the QQ line in ggplot, so we have to make our own calculations. The closer that our data aligns to the QQ line, the more closely it matches the theoretical distribution. This confirms with what we noticed in the previous stat function plot, that our log values match the normal distribution very well. 
With the functions we've covered in this chapter, we have moved into the arena of graphical data analysis, whereby we are truly using visuals as part of our statistical repertoire, going far beyond just making pretty plots. There are more stat functions which are available for you to explore during the exercises, so let's take a look.